Let's go to Victoria now and catch up with the Federal Education Minister, Dan Tian. Thanks for joining us, sir. Dan. I want to come to pandemic issues in a moment. But first up, we looked earlier at the week in the story out of the University of New South Wales where the university had published some very reasonable criticisms from one of its academics uh, of, of Beijing and, and a defence of human rights in Hong Kong, and yet the uni bowed to pressure and pulled this uh, story down. Are, are you worried that we're still seeing this sort of intimidation and this sort of kowtowing to Chinese interests at our universities? Well, well, Chris, freedom of speech and freedom of academic inquiry have to be absolute pillars of our higher education providers. And this is um, something that the government uh, is going to keep uh, insisting and keep working on. Obviously, we put in place the, the French code. We got Robert French, the former Chief Justice of the High Court, uh, to do a review of freedom of speech and freedom of academic inquiry at our universities. He put in place a voluntary code. Uh, all universities have said that they are going to adopt that and said that they will be fully implemented by the end of the year. Um, so we will continue to keep working with the sector to make sure that freedom of speech and freedom of academic inquiry is embedded in their institutions. It's so vital at this time in our history that that is the case. And I want to see Australian higher education providers being renowned across the globe for the provisions that they put in place to protect freedom of speech and protect freedom of academic inquiry. That's all well and good and uh, all power to your arm in, in doing that with the universities, but in this specific case, it is clear, even from the university's own response and apology, that they actually took down this information because of pressure from Chinese interests. That's kind of chilling, isn't it? Uh, look, it means that we've still got more work to do and, and we want to make sure that all universities understand that freedom of speech is absolutely vital to our nation's future. It's vital to them as organisations and we're going to continue to keep working to insist that is absolutely embedded in the culture of our higher education institutions. We want to make sure when these types of things happen that the first thing that any university would think about is the absolute um, necessity for us to be able to protect freedom of speech in this nation. Uh, and I will have more to, more to say on this in, in coming days, but we have to make sure that it is an absolute pillar of our higher education providers. I want to come to the pandemic, your home state of Victoria. Obviously, uh, they need to slow the rate of infection in Victoria because it's got away from them a bit. But uh, do you think that this extreme lockdown and a curfew in Melbourne is Daniel Andrews overplaying his hand and rather than picking off those measures that might be most effective? Well, I think the issue we have here in Victoria is the level of community transmission and we've got to make sure that we can put a stop to it. And my hope is that by taking these measures, which uh, unfortunately, uh, I think, have to be taken, regrettably have to be taken. We've got to make sure that while we're doing this, we're getting the contact tracing right, we're getting the testing timer to turnaround times absolutely shortened, and we're making sure that people are socially distancing. And there's but if, if I could just jump in there, because we're running out of time. Distancing. Sorry, Dan, Tien, if I could jump in, because we are out of time. This is precisely my point. He hasn't got his contact tracing right. Up until this week, he was letting infected people leave their home for exercise. He hasn't got these basic things right, yet he's gone into the lockdown and the, and the curfew beforehand. Shouldn't they have got those basic things right because they've worked in other states? Instead, he's let, let, let them sort of dwindle and he's gone to an extreme lockdown. Well, well, getting the public health response right is absolutely crucial. And you're right, we've seen in seven uh, of the eight states and territories that that public health response has, has led to us being able to flatten the curve. Uh, we've got to do that in Victoria. We've got to get the public health response right. But given the level of community transmission going on, uh, while we do that, we have to put these measures in place to enable us to get that public health response exactly where we need it. So uh, while it's terrible and especially the economic consequences are, are awful, uh, we've got to make sure that we can get the public health response in place so that we'll flatten the curve and we know it will stay flattened.